Welcome everyone to part three of Brewing with the Baron. <clears throat> now I'll get started. I'll just generally talk for a couple minutes uh, to see if some more people will be coming on. One of the things you're going to see is uh, both on each side of the table is the stuff that we started with two days ago and the mead that we made yesterday. The ones from two days ago, well, it doesn't look like it's really anything happening. It looks like the pomegranate juice one might be starting to activate. There's a little bit of foam on the edges. That's a good sign. And it does look like there is some pressure in the first cylinder, pushing up on the second. That's another good sign. So what we're going to do is we will not shock the pomegranate juice today, but we will add the initial yeast to the mead, and we will shock the uh, other one. I can't remember if it was apple or wine. I think it was apple. So what we'll do is first we will start. We're going to make two batches of different ciders today. So once that starts heating up, we will go and we will add the yeast while it's starting to heat up. Now, I want everyone that wants to, please, please make any comments. I'm not gonna take anything personally. In fact, I got a comment yesterday from, excuse me if I say your name wrong, Ted Hewitt Ofs. Uh, some of the things that he mentioned are very good things to remember. Uh, he said that, remember, not all water that you get at the store is purified or sanitary, or completely sanitized. So one of the things you can do to, uh, he also said about scorching, like I said, if it starts to heat up, you can start burning the honey. Another thing, another way that you can do it is to actually put the water in, whatever water from the sink, from your purifier, from the store. And if you want to make sure that it's really, really safe, you bring it up to a full boil. Let it boil for about three minutes and then shut it off. Once you shut it off, then you can start adding the mead and stirring it at that point. Another thing he said, and I didn't bring it up because we were making it very quickly, was if you want to set it to the side, yes, put a lid on it to make sure that no bacteria, no debris can land into it, change the flavor, stop the yeast production. The other thing, of course, as uh, he also mentioned, is putting it into a ice bath. If you want to, I've done this before, uh, I've put in an ice bath and I've also put it in the kitchen sink and I've just run cold water over the top of the bottle or the pan to make the temperature decrease faster. Now, if you put it in an ice bath, it can still take one or two hours for the temperature to completely go down. Because remember, it will start to cool from the outside to the inside. So the outside might be cool enough, but the inside might still be 80, 90 degrees. So it's still going to take you several hours for the temperature to be well-rounded. Me personally, the method that I use is to heat it and then let it sit. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with just some straight apple cider or apple juice. I use apple cider. What we're going to do, like I said, we're going to make two one gallon batches. One of the batches is going to be made with brown sugar. Another batch is going to be made with molasses. Now we're going to start with the molasses first because we're going to use the same pot. 
Uh, any residue from the molasses is going to be fine because brown sugar is sugar with molasses. Now we're doing this just to see what type of real big different, or if there is a different, the level of different flavor profiles of brown sugar or just straight molasses. So we're going to let that heat up for a bit. While we're doing that, we're going to go put the yeast in to the mead that we made yesterday. Now, as I said before, the yeast that I used is brewer's yeast, Red Star. Now, I go and I do a couple of things. Number one, I do an initial add the yeast, or for some of the products, I add yeast and sugar, just to get it going a little bit. Now, for the second one, I will always add yeast and sugar, a little bit of sugar, just to get the yeast going. That's essentially shocking it. If it does not start again after a couple of days, I will add yeast and nutrients. Nutrient activates with the yeast a little bit better to start activating a little bit more. You can add it directly to the bottle, which is what I'm going to do, or if you have a really big batch, what I like to do is I like to take a little bit of the juice, set it to the side, add this the sugar, add the yeast to that bowl, and let it sit for about an hour. Cover it up with saran wrap, let it sit. At that point, the yeast should activate very quickly. When that happens, I take it and I just pour it directly into the bottle. It's pretty much making sure that the yeast activates right away. Since we're using, of course, one gallon again. To save time, I have thoroughly cleaned all my stuff and let it sit out to dry with the sanitizer. Yes, I use uh, food grade sanitizer. The sanitizer that I use is called One Step. And I pretty much get everything from Amazon. It's quite easy and usually cheap, and it comes in a couple of days. So I will take, for the initial, I always start with, as it says, one to two grams per gallon. I'll always go with two grams right away. So that is two of the one quarter teaspoon. Now remember, we sanitized everything yesterday for this, so we didn't have to restart over. So now, the yeast is there, I'm not gonna shake it up. I actually prefer not to shake up the yeast, let it sit on top, it'll start to act, activate, I think, easier and quicker. So now from there, I will just set this off to the side, and again, we will always check on each one of our products every day. Now, since this one shows like it has done zero activation at all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shock it. So I'm going to take a one quarter cup of pure sugar. And from there, another two scoops or two grams of the yeast. And slowly just add it. And then I will put this back on. And 
course. We'll check on that one tomorrow. Now, this is starting to heat up a bit. At this point, I will go and add my molasses. I'm going to be using about three and a half pounds instead of three, just mainly because the way the bottles come does not come into an easy three pound aspect. So a little bit more molasses should not hurt. So I'm going to turn down my flame. As you can see, I'm pouring this in very slowly. I don't want a gigantic clump. And like I said, one of the nice aspects about molasses, besides a different type of sweetness, is the fact it's going to make it really dark, which I think find is kind of interesting. Yes, and it's even thicker than honey. And like I said yesterday, when it gets to the point when there's not a lot in there or it's really hard to come out, just put the bottles into the microwave for 30 seconds. It'll heat it up, you'll, it'll come out a lot smoother, and you'll get a lot more very quickly. Just be careful. The bottles can get kind of hot sometimes. The glass ones usually are not too bad, but the plastic ones, like the honey might come in, can get kind of hot, so be careful and don't burn yourself. One. Now another way to make sure that they come out even smoother is to actually put the bottles, make sure you take the bottle cap or the bottle tops off, and put them in a warm water bath. So you can put it on the stove, heat it up for about 10 minutes at medium high, and then let it sit for about 30 minutes. Then that way the molasses will come out a lot faster, a lot smoother, Now, I'm also a proponent of, I would rather have a much more concentrated form of my drink to begin with, because I can always add more apple juice or cider later. Or if it's not very sweet, I can add, between my first and second fermentation, more molasses, different things like that. Because when it gets done, if you're like, wow, this tastes really good, but it's very light, then you just need to, for your next batch, put more on. Or if it's really concentrated, you just add more apple cider. One of the things I also found out is there's the intensity of the alcohol content. I usually do a double fermentation to get a higher level. Like I said, the if you just ferment grapes 
by themselves, apple juice by themselves, pear juice by themselves, honey by itself. Well, honey is going to be a little bit higher. If you just get a straight juice, you're going to get probably around two, two and a half to five percent honey. You're going to get at least starting at about three and a half percent. But if you start adding more honey or more sugar, you're going to get it up to an eight, a nine, a 12, 15 or 16 percent alcohol content. Now, it's interesting because some people like it, some people think it's too much. If you want to, what I do is I take and I cut it when I start bottling it, and I put a space gap into the bottle, and I add about one-fourth cider or apple juice to cut it down. So I have essentially two types of cider that I usually make. The I'm going to walk around with a bottle and drink at a fireplace or a, a big bonfire. Or I want something that's nice and good and sweet, but it's not going to really affect me really, really bad. So I can eat, so I can uh, drink it while I'm eating. And it's a nice little way of adding a different flavor to a meal. Gives you your vitamin C. Man, this is really dark. <laughs> Shut this off for now. Plenty warm. Whenever you ferment something, like I said, I always like to ferment it a second time. One, it makes sure that it continues fermenting uh, what was not fermented the first time. And it also allows you, as I said, to add more sugar and get a higher alcohol content. But to me, it also makes it smoother. It's one of those nice things where if you want to drink something that is good and fast, either a quick mead or a sack mead or a quick cider. Yeah, doing a small little fermentation for a couple of weeks, get the major fermentation down. You can still drink it, it still tastes fine, but it might not be the flavor that you want or the smoothness that you want. start putting it in the bottle, you will actually see how dark this cider is. Let's see. Wash it off real quick. I said when you start pouring you always make sure that you have something underneath of the bottle so it doesn't get the table too sticky now that 
<laughs> is some pretty dark cider. And like I said yesterday, the one thing you guys don't get to experience right now is the aroma of this. It's very interesting because it smells very dark. Not exactly sure the right aroma description for it. Top off the rest with straight apple cider juice. Cider. So, as we talked about yesterday, you always want to make sure you write down the ingredients. So, one gallon of apple juice or apple cider. And three and a half pounds of molasses. And today's date is April 1st. We'll set that off to the side. And like I said, I've already cleaned the stopper and the airlock earlier. So I will put that in there. This sit 24 hours.
and put the yeast in it tomorrow. All right. Now, do a little bit of cleaning up here real quick, and then we will start on the second one, and that will be apple juice and brown sugar. Now, of course, between every batch, you should thoroughly clean all of your stuff so you're not going to get a flavor from one batch into another that you don't want. But like I said, brown sugar is sugar with molasses in it. So if we have a little bit of molasses flavor left over, it's not going to make that big of a deal. Is clean, put it back in the sanitizer. And let that dry for a bit. All right, now the next batch. Brown sugar. Now, I'm actually doing this for the first time, both comparing molasses and brown sugar. So, it's a new experience for both of us. Again, let this heat up for a bit. should we talk about? Okay, tomorrow uh, will be part four. Tomorrow I'll be having a friend come over. Uh, she'll be bringing some uh, bottles of her mead that she created. Uh, she added uh, raspberries in one and mixed berries in another. She also used tea to complement uh, the berry flavor. So we're going to be doing a first fermentation to second fermentation. So we will show you how to use the siphon. We'll help show you how to use it both as if you were doing it by yourself and also if you had a friend. Doing it by yourself can be a bit of a problem because, all right, I need to take care of the bottle and the siphon and everything, but I also gotta make sure that the bottle that it's going into is low enough and that the hose stays in the bottle. That is the Achilles heel of most people. So here's a trick and a very cheap trick. Use a masking tape. All you need to do 
is take a section, and I'll show it to you tomorrow. Take about that much. What you want to do is you want to put the hose about six inches into the barrel, into the bottle, excuse me, or carboy, whatever you want to use. And then what you do is you wrap from the middle around the hose. Then from there, you then wrap it, quick demonstration on this other bottle. Around the neck of it. And when you do that, the holes will stay in and it won't come out. Because the last thing you need is to get about one quart of fermented, spicy, smelly, very stainy juice somewhere on the floor. The linoleum's not too bad. If it's anywhere near your carpet, your toast, you definitely don't want that. All right. What we'll do is we'll start adding the brown sugar and we'll see how quickly it dissolves. Now, this bag is seven pounds. So as with everything, it should be three pounds to one gallon. It'll just be easier if I just take half of it and that'll be three and a half pounds. Looks like it's dissolving pretty well. I'm going to take the flame off. Keep adding sugar. Now remember, take your time. There's no rush on this. If it's too much, it's going to ferment. If it's too little, you just put more in on the second fermentation. All right, let's see how much that is. Close, just a little bit more. That should do it. And of course, this is nice because the bag has a zip lock closure. So as soon as you're done, you just seal it and you put it away. All right, now. Another interesting thing is if you like the color of the cider that you use, you can use a lighter cider or a darker cider or lighter, darker apple juice. But whenever you add anything to it, it is going to make it darker. Now, strangely enough, sometimes when it ferments, it'll actually get lighter. So you have to just work with the color scheme, what you want. Now with the brown sugar, it has dark in it. It's now like a dark brown instead of a black like the molasses. Hmm. The aroma more has more of the apple than the molasses. But you do have a slight hint still. Turn it back on a little bit. There's still some parts of the brown sugar that is not 
completely melting yet. We're dissolving. things that I do is when I heat up either the, the mead or the cider or the perry or anything, at that point is when I know the additional spices I want to add. So for example, like I said, one of the nice pairings with apple is always cinnamon. Well, if you get cinnamon sticks and you crush them and put it in the rolling boil it'll start activating the cinnamon much, much sooner, unless you want to put in the uh, cinnamon powder. Either way works, but for the aroma, you get, to me, you get a much stronger aroma of cinnamon with cinnamon sticks when it's boiled, and it starts to ferment for the entire time, instead of either adding it and letting it dissolve periodically, either in the first or the second fermentation. So you might have to use more of the powder than you would at the sticks, because it doesn't have that immediate effect. If that makes sense. I think it does. All right. I think that is pretty good. Some more paper towels. Oops, sorry about that. Now, I'm going to try and decrease some of the spillage by bringing it closer to the pot. So the bottom will drip back into the pot. Yeah, it's much better. Well, I'm sure you can tell, or at least I hope you can tell, that the color is not as dark as the molasses. I'll bring them both up at the end so you can see the difference. As you can see, I'm turning my funnel off to the side a little bit. That is mainly to make sure that there is an air opening. So air comes up, so it goes down faster. Otherwise, if you keep it like this, air sometimes has to come back up through the spout. And it can take a little bit longer. It's pretty good. the bell. And then again, they 
stopper and airlock that I've already cleaned and prepared. set that there and I'll bring the other one back up so you can compare the colors. I'm not exactly sure if you can tell the extreme difference in colors but this one is darker and this is a very dark brown. So black, dark brown. All right, another two gallons but this time cider. And of course, what do we do? We mark down again what it is, what we made, the proportions. And three and a half pounds of brown sugar. And today's date. check and see the status of the pomegranate juice, see if it's been activating more. If not, we'll shock that one. We'll check on the status of the other two we added uh, yeast and sugar to today, and just yeast for the mead, and tomorrow we'll add the yeast to our two ciders, and then we will show you how to siphon from your first fermentation into your second fermentation bottle. And then we will go from there. Uh, we're either Friday, we're going to try and do essentially a flavor testing, or we will do pairings. Depends on if I can get anyone to show up. If not, then I'll be tasting myself, which that sounded really bad. Okay, never mind. But until that time comes, thank you very much for uh, visiting me today. Hope you continue to watch. And same time tomorrow, 5.30. Enjoy. Thank you.